Warning. The following program contains flashing imagery and content which may be considered harmful or traumatizing to some. Viewer discretion is extremely advised. Welcome to the darkest depths. Stephen Supel and his wife Cheryl had known each other since grade school and had married in 1990. But unfortunately, after years of trying, were unable to have their own children naturally. It was early in 1998 that they contacted a South Korean adoption agency and arranged to adopt four children who had been abandoned by separate unmarried mothers. The couple were beyond excited about the chance to raise their own family, and for months they shared pictures of the children with their family and friends, waiting for the time to bring them to their new home. They adopted the oldest boy, 10-year-old Ethan, in 1998, 7-year-old Seth in 1999, 5-year-old Mira in 2002, and 3-year-old Eleanor in 2005. Having assembled the perfect family, Stephen and Cheryl busied themselves in being happy with their new children. They had the four kids baptized at their local Catholic church. Stephen's family owned the biggest law firm in the area, and Stephen excelled at his job as the vice president of Hills Bank and Trust Company in Iowa City. Life for the Supo family appeared to be perfect from every angle, or so it seemed. What no one knew is that Stephen had some dark secrets about his job that he consistently kept from his family. Behind closed doors, he was stealing thousands of dollars from the bank. And in 2008, Karma caught up with him. In February of that year, he was arrested on embezzlement of over $560,000 and money laundering charges, pleading not guilty of the crimes on February 20th but indicated to the investigators that he had, in fact, diverted the funds to a personal account where he spent most of the money on cocaine. He then posted bail to return to his family until his trial in April. But Stephen would never see trial for his crimes. On Easter Sunday, March 23, 2008, the Supo family started the day by attending Mass at church. Stephen and Cheryl's parents were both in attendance, and a good time was had by all at the service. Around 8 p.m. that night, a family friend had stopped by the Supo residence and had a short visit with Stephen. They noticed one of the children there in the house as well, but noted that nothing seemed unusual. At 11.30 p.m., Stephen left a message for his father and brother at their law firm and in the message he states that his family is in heaven. Authorities determined that before leaving the message he had already gone to the garage to retrieve a baseball bat, before beating his wife to death with it as she lay sleeping in their bed. After leaving the message, Stephen gathered his four adopted children and loaded them into the family van, which he started and left running in the closed garage attempting to kill himself and all four of them by carbon monoxide poisoning. But after some time, the children became restless, and Stephen decided that he needed a quicker way of ending his problems. He took all four children back into the house, telling Ethan, Seth, and Myra to go upstairs to their rooms, while he left little Eleanor downstairs in the toy room. Stephen then went to his bedroom and got the bloody baseball bat that was lying next to his dead wife, and one by one went to his children's bedrooms, beating all three of them to death with the bat. He then went downstairs and beat three-year-old Eleanor to death with it as well. At 3.45 a.m. on Monday morning, Stephen left a message on his home answering machine, expressing regret for killing his entire family. Ten minutes later, at 4.01 a.m., he left another message on the same machine, indicating that he had tried to drown himself in the Iowa River, 
but was unsuccessful as he kept floating. At 6.31 a.m., Stephen calls 911 and tells them to go to his address. When the dispatch operator asked what was going on, he instantly hung up. Five minutes later, at 6.36 a.m., multiple witnesses watched in horror as Stephen Supel deliberately drove into a concrete pillar at 80 miles an hour on I-80, igniting the van into a ball of flames and killing himself instantly. The flames were so hot that Stephen was nearly burnt to ashes and wasn't able to be identified at the scene. At 6.45 a.m. that Monday morning, Iowa City Police entered the Supo home to find Cheryl and the four children dead and the home covered in blood. In a surprising move, all six members of the Supo family were given a joint Catholic funeral, including Stephen, which sparked a great deal of controversy in Iowa City. The theme for the service was forgiveness. Thank you for watching Darkest Depths. Follow on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok for the absolute worst that humanity has to offer in true crime and horror. Merchandise available through teespring.com. Episode requests made through darkestdeptstruecrime at gmail.com.